Welcome. Each year I put together a video listing the astronomical events that are coming up in the coming year. This is the video for 2020. The events that usually garner the most attention are eclipses, both solar and lunar. In any given year you can have between four and seven eclipses. There's always a minimum of two solar and two lunar eclipses, so that means you can have up to five of either. In 2020 we have a total of six eclipses, two solar and four lunar. Having four lunar eclipses in a year is actually quite rare. It only happens about once in every 10 years. The first of these six eclipses occurs on the 10th of January and is a penumbral lunar eclipse. That is effectively a partial eclipse of the sun by the earth as seen from the moon. So effectively the moon passes through the edge of the earth's shadow. This eclipse will be seen from Europe, Asia and Eastern Africa. So what can you expect to see if you see this sort of eclipse? Here's a before and after picture of a penumbral eclipse. The moon on the left is as you'd normally see it at full moon. Uh, and on the right is during the middle of the eclipse. On the 5th of June, we have a second penumbral eclipse of the moon. Now, this is very similar to the one in January, except for the moon doesn't go all the way into the Earth's shadow. Now, this is visible from Europe, Africa and most of Asia. On the 21st of June, there is an annular solar eclipse. An annular eclipse occurs when the apparent diameter of the moon is less than the apparent diameter of the sun. This one will be visible from Eastern Africa, Yemen, India and China. This is what an annular solar eclipse looks like. You see the bright surface of the sun peaking above the uh, dark circle of the moon. On the 5th of July, there's another penumbral eclipse of the moon. This was a very weak uh, eclipse indeed because the moon only just touches the edge of the Earth's penumbral shadow. This one will be visible from West Africa, South and North America. On the 30th November, we have yet another penumbral lunar eclipse. This one will be basically visible from North America, but again, it's very similar to the last one where the moon just clips the southern part of the Earth's shadow. Last, but by no means least, we have a total solar eclipse on the 14th of December. It will be visible, unfortunately, only from the southern tip of South America, and is a relatively short duration eclipse of length 2 minutes 10 seconds at its maximum uh, period. Next, let's deal with the planets. The best time to see the inner planets is when they're at maximum elongation. That means that they're maximum distance from the sun, either to the east or to the west. The outer planets, the best time to see them is when they're in opposition, i.e. they're on the far side of the earth uh, opposite the sun. So they're at their closest approach to the earth and best illuminated. There's also another type of phenomenon that's interesting with the planets, and that's conjunction. It's when two planets appear very close together. First, let's take a look at Mercury. Its orbital period is 88 days, so it goes around the Sun four times faster than the Earth does. So there's plenty of opportunities to see it, both as an evening star, that means that it's, it's maximum distance from the Sun on the eastern side of the Sun, or as a morning star when it's on the western side of the Sun. So let's take a look at when we can best see Mercury. On the 10th of February, it's an evening star. Uh, so you'll see it about 18.2 degrees away from the sun. On the 24th of March, it's a morning star at 27.8 degrees away from the sun. On the 4th of June, it's an evening star again. And then it's 24 degrees uh, away from the sun. 22nd of July, it's a morning star again at 20 degrees away from the sun. On the 1st of October, it's an evening star at 25.8 degrees away from the sun. And on the 10th of November, it's a morning star again at 22.1 degrees away from the sun. Venus is also an inner planet, so consequently it will uh, appear both to the east and the west of the sun. But it has an orbit uh, that takes 224 days to go around the sun, I about eight months. So there are fewer opportunities to see it as either a morning or an evening star. In 2020, we have two such opportunities. One on the 24th of March is an evening star and 46.1 degrees away from the sun. 
and on the 13th of August it's a morning star at 45.8 degrees away from the Sun. As I said earlier, the outer planets are easiest to see when they're in opposition, i.e. directly opposite the Sun. Now Mars, Jupiter and Saturn are all naked eye objects, so you don't need a telescope to see them, although if you want to see the details of the surface of the planets, you will need a good telescope. Uranus and Neptune are much fainter objects, and so you will need a, a large telescope to get any view of those planets at all. Jupiter is in opposition on the 14th of July. When it's in opposition, it will be directly south at midnight local time. So that'll be the easiest thing to do. Look for a bright object right on uh, the south southern direction at midnight. On the 20th of July, uh, Saturn is at opposition. On the 11th of September, Neptune is in opposition and you'll need a star chart and a good telescope for that. The 13th of October, Mars will be in opposition. It'll be a fainter object, but it will be distinctly red, and as I say, directly south at midnight. And on the 31st of October, Uranus will be at opposition. So let's deal with some conjunctions, and I'm only going to talk about conjunctions that are less than 30 arc minutes apart, so that's about the diameter of moon, the moon. First, on the 23rd of January, we have a conjunction between the moon and Jupiter. And they're going to be about 21 arc minutes apart, so that's two-thirds the diameter of the Moon. On the 27th of January, Venus and Neptune are going to be only four arc minutes apart, so that's about a tenth of the diameter of the Moon. And this may be your best opportunity to find Neptune, uh, because it's going to be easy to see Venus, and Neptune's going to be close by. On the 6th of September, the Moon and Mars are going to be only one arc minute apart, which is amazingly close. And the pièce de résistance for 2020 is the uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. Now, this is very rare. It only occurs once every 20 years. And they're going to be only six arc minutes apart. So that's about a fifth of the diameter of the moon. That should be quite spectacular in our skies. Meteor observing is one of the easiest things to do. And what do you, you need very little equipment for it. You need a, a beach lounger, a pillow some warm clothing or blankets, or if it's in the summer, uh, some mosquito repellent. And you just lay there and watch the meteors go by. We have 11 major meteor showers this year, and most of them are going to be pretty good observing. The quadrantids, the quadrantids and lyrids are fine. The eta aquarids and the delta aquids are going to be interfered with by the moon. The Perseids are going to be partly interfered with the Moon, but they tend to be brighter meteors, so you may, may see some of the brighter ones anyway. The Draconids and Orionids are going to be fine. The Taurids are not, they're going to be interfered with by the Moon. The Leonids are fine. The Geminids, which are the best meteor shower of the all, are going to peak on the night of the 13th to 14th of De and morning of the 14th of December. Uh, and they have a rate of 120 meteors per hour, so that's a really good one to look at. And then you have the Ursarids uh, on the 21st and 22nd of December. And they're going to be fine. Here are some of the important dates uh, through the year as far as the Earth's orbit is concerned. On the 5th of January, the Earth is closest to the Sun. On the 29th of February, remember it's a leap year, so we're going to add extra night day. On the 20th of March, we have the vernal equinox. On the 22nd of June, we have the summer solstice. On the 4th of July, the Earth is furthest from the Sun. On the 22nd of September, it's the autumnal equinox and also my wedding anniversary. And on the 21st of December, it'll be the winter solstice. Perhaps it's time to say something about the solar cycle. The sun has been quiet for nearly a year. Now that's perfectly normal at this stage of the solar cycle, I is between two cycles, so we're in the so-called quiet period between that or solar minimum. At the moment, we're seeing a mixture of old solar cycle 24 regions and new cycle solar cycle 25 regions, which is again also perfectly typical of a normal minimum between two cycles. We expect the onset of solar cycle 25 in 2020 or early 2021. The NOAA NASA prediction uh, shows a cycle very similar to the last one, maybe slightly larger, with a peak sunspot number of 115 and uh, it occurring sometime in July of 
2025. Now, I'm a bit more optimistic than that. I think it's going to be nearer to 140 uh, and peaking just about six months to a year earlier than that. We shall see. I hope you found this uh, calendar helpful. Um, may you have clear skies and see lots of stars in 2020. Happy holidays and have a prosperous new year.